everyone, Saga here with your weekly Monday memo. So this week we enter the week with Sun and Venus in Leo still and Mars and Mercury in Virgo still. So this of course is the same energy as we had previous week, so if you want to recap for what that means then please watch a previous Monday memo. I'm going to focus on the shifts this week because there are some we want to talk about. So the Sun is going to shift away from Leo and into Virgo this week, the 23rd or Wednesday. What that means, of course, is with the sun being the center of our solar system and thus also connected with the center of our own beings, that sort of core energy is going to be influenced and interconnected more so with Virgo than with Leo. And Leo has been this very shining, confident, warm summer day, if you will, focused on empowering ourselves and letting ourselves shine Whereas Virgo is going to bring us back to earth and ground us and make us more practically minded. Of course, we all get influenced in different ways depending on our own natal charts and our own personalities and our own journey through life. But you might notice, you know, a desire to move towards practicality and rationality and organizing things and being in touch with earth and slow and steady sort of pace. Not as much as with Taurus. This is more so a productive sort of slow and steady. So not not quite as um, having a tendency to be as still as Taurus, but still moving forward in a very meticulous way. On the same day, the 23rd, Mercury is going retrograde fully. So we've been in the pre-shadow period, but on the 23rd, we're entering the true retrograde. And as always with retrogrades, we tend to feel the energies most on the day of the retrograde and the day when the planet or asteroid is going direct again. So this is the 23rd as mentioned and if you're not familiar with Mercury retrograde, though it is a very infamous sort of retrograde, it happens several times a year, it is connected to our communication and our thoughts and also electronics and trades such as contracts and jobs. So what tends to happen is Mercury tends to be the most noticeable for many because it it influences our everyday life a bit more noticeably and tangibly than we might feel with the slower moving planets who are more about like deeper societal and personal shifts. With a Mercury in retrograde, you might notice things such as technology failing, uh, communication failing, even feeling a bit more confused or lost because our own thoughts are also in line with Mercurian energy. So with the retrograde, we might feel that disrupt this sort of disruption. But I do want to say that, you know, Mercury retrogrades and all retrogrades tend to get a bad rap. So while they can be very, you know, how should I say, distracting almost or, or disruptive, the aim, of course, is to bring us challenges so that we can learn and we can overcome and we can grow. So remember that and be mindful of the way in which you think and the way you communicate, because being more mindful and aware of our own sort of process and influence that we are receiving from the universe. We can be more mindful of how we communicate and thus also be more patient not only with others, but more aware of how we try to bridge those gaps of miscommunication. I do want to, ask, I feel called to say this, some people stop doing things during a Mercury retrograde, like stop looking for jobs and stop like doing anything like they don't want to sign contracts, they want to send emails. It is my experience that we still need to keep living life. So if you have the luxury of waiting with something like that and you feel intuitively that you should, then of course trust that. However, the retrogrades are not there to stop our lives. Sure, they might throw us a few curveballs and they might even put us in a sort of stationary little cocoon or bubble where we can't progress things. But generally that's because it is this holding space for us to rest and to reevaluate. It is not my experience or belief, you know, that we should stop doing things entirely because of certain star alignments, unless it's something really, really, I want to say extreme almost, or something very, very specific to your own chart and, and something that really stands out. But of course, that's a more personal than um, event in your life. So aside from that, <laughs> on Sunday, we have another shift. Sorry for that. <laughs> Mars enters Libra. So going from Virgo, as mentioned, the very meticulous, the very practical, the very detail-oriented sign, Mars is going to shift into Libra, which tends to be more about mediation and balance and even arts and like beautiful things, if you will. So our goals and our ambitions are going to be influenced less so 
with the practical side and looking for the details and the small goals and the baby steps. And we might start finding ourselves drawn to and inspired by and our ambitions fueled by creativity, art, and also blending of worlds. So you might have noticed perhaps that with Virgo's influence on Mars, you might have been able to do a lot of baby steps or get an idea, the plan, if you will, for what you wish to achieve if you, you know, flowed with those energies. And now you might find a way to start implementing that into your life in the, with that sort of mediation and blending that you can really embody through Libra's energy. And that's basically it for the shifts this week. Of course, there are now, with Mercury going retrograde, seven planets and dwarf planets and or asteroids in retrograde. So to run through them, I have to double check my list because I don't want to mess it up. Venus, Saturn, Neptune, Pluto, Chiron, Eros, and Mercury. And Uranus is joining this retrograde list next week. So we are definitely deep in retrograde season. That means you might be going through extra challenges, extra obstacles. You might even be actually feeling the opposite and feeling stalled or like things are stopped or you're lost. And if that's the case, then know that this is a part of the astrological energies working with, of course, spirits and the weaves plan for your life's journey. Keep doing inspired action. Keep doing what you feel is right and what you know, we're here to do because we live in the apparent world and there are many influences beyond the astrological. So we're still responsible for our own actions and, you know, you know, trying to push things forward. But if the universe seems to be really kind of strong arming or, or moving things in a way, despite your best efforts, then know that it's not punishment. It's not something that's wrong. It is that we are simply in a period that's very, very good and fruitful for challenges that Help us learn, overcome, shed what's old, embrace what's new, and really, you know, go into a new phase, if you will. Retrograde seasons aren't unusual, so it's not like this big catastrophe, but it is an emotional intensive period, especially if you're very, very influenced by astrological energies. Be aware that that might be why, and if that's the case, then please, you know, practice self-care, meditate, hydrate, you know, physical body helps our spiritual health and so on. You know, it's all interconnected. So, you know, be mindful of maybe doing some yoga if that's something that's suitable for you. You know, make sure you go on walks if that's something that's suitable for you or available to you, you know, or just do things that are, even if they are small, are really good for your spiritual, emotional, mental and physical health within the circumstances that you have because it's extra important during these periods and we tend to drop those things as the first thing <laughs> you know when we're going through stressful moments because we feel like we need to do our duties even harder and so we drop all the things that are actually nourishing us when in reality we should probably do it the other way around if we can of course life circumstance is not always so graceful and lenient when it comes to prioritizing you know our heart's desires but within the realm of what you can do here and now, then I obviously recommend that you do that for your own self-care. And as always, I do have a card and it is, ah, okay. Speaking of being stopped or held in a, a stasis, if you will, by the universe, the card is wait. It's not yet time. Things are being woven. And I mentioned, you know, the, the weave, of course, which is not very unusual for me to mention. I refer to the strands of energy that is everything as the weave based on my Norse pagan, um, how should I say, vocabulary. So if you notice here, the universe is indeed literally holding this person in stasis. And if this card feels like it resonates with you, then this is a reminder that things are being put on hold because it's not the right time. Oftentimes we get frustrated when things are stopping and we feel like I'm doing everything and this is what I really want and why is it not working? Why are things not happening? You know, but there is a purpose for it usually. There are things that are being woven and we really have to take these moments when that happens and try to tap into not only trust for the universe, but of course trust for ourselves and trust that things will be okay and that we can handle whichever way in which things will play out, even if it's not the optimal way we would have decided for it, trusting that it is the optimal way that's good for us. And now I'm running out of time, so I will wish you a beautiful week ahead. Have a beautiful day and night wherever you are, and please take care. Bye.